Welcome to this session, Blake and Molly. For those who don't know me, my name is Teacher Peter. And in this session, I'm going to take you through science. Today in science, I want us to look at this topic, light energy. Yes, for Blake and Molly, before we broke up for holidays, we had already started on this topic of light. We discussed about what light is. Um, and I think this topic is not really so new to your eyes. Yes. And for this particular session, I want us to make a review of what I told you when we were still handling the face-to-face -face session with you. Are we together? So, before we broke off for holidays, we had discussed some things, mean light. Let's start with this question. What is light? I want to give you two seconds to discuss between yourselves and get the right answer. I know you've come up with good answers, beautiful answers. Okay, what is light? Light is a form of energy that enables us to see objects. Light is a form of energy that enables us to see objects. Good. Does that mean that without light we can't see objects? You're right. Without light, we can't see objects. Are we together? It is light that enables us to see objects. It is light that enables us to see. That's why during darkness, we can't see. We shall find out why. Let us see how we see objects. How do we see objects? How are we able to see objects? Are we together? We can see objects because light from them is reflected to our eyes. We can see objects because light from them is reflected to our eyes. Good. So, when light rays from the source hit an object, that object will reflect the light rays to our eyes for us to be able to see the object. Take an example. The sun is a source of energy. Are we together? Maybe it is during the day. You are seeing a car. How are you able to see that car? You are seeing. The light rays from the sun will run and hit onto the car. And then from the car, they will be reflected to your eyes. And then you will be able to see the car. What if there is no light, what happens? There is no light rays that is going to go and hit onto the car. And there is nothing that is going to be reflected to your eyes. And therefore, you will not be able to see anything. So if you are moving in darkness and there is a car there, you can easily knock it down. I don't know whether it will fall down, but I know you scream. Yes. So, you cannot see a car in darkness because it cannot reflect light rays to your eyes. So let's go back to our answer here. We are saying that we can see objects because the light from them is reflected to our eyes. Let me repeat this. When there is a source of light, the source of light will emit light. Then the rays from that light will go and hit onto the object. <coughs> Be it a car, a house, somebody, anything you are seeing food, a book, and then that object, that book, that food, that car, 
we will reflect the light rays to your eyes and you'll be able to see that particular object. Are we together? Let's go to the next. Let's look at the properties of light. There are several properties of light, but let's begin with this one here. Light forms the shadows when obstructed. Correct. When you obstruct light, a shadow will be formed. Try an experiment. I want you to get a torch and a book. Switch on the torch. Put the book in front of the light rays coming from the torch. I want you to make your observations and see what is formed. Can you see a shadow? If you can see a shadow, it's because the light rays from the torch have been obstructed by the book, therefore forming a shadow on the opposite side of the light. You can also put a source of light on your right hand side and you will see a shadow on your left hand side, meaning that your body has obstructed the light and therefore a shadow has been formed. So a shadow is formed when light has been obstructed. Let's go back to the properties of light. Light forms shadows when obstructed. Next. Light travels at a speed of 300,000 kilometers per second in air. Scientists have already proved this. There is nothing in this universe that can run faster than sound. I'm sorry. There is nothing in this universe that can run faster than light. Are we together? So, light travels faster than anything you've ever thought about. Let's go to the next. Light can be reflected. In this diagram, we can see that this red light is light coming from a source, probably a torch, probably the sun around here, probably a candle around here, all together, probably a lantern around here, all together. So when the light rays from this source comes like this, it forms what we call the incident ray. The light rays that are coming from the source. This light rays, we call it the instant what? Ray. I want you to get your torch and you switch it on. You will be able to see the incident ray. That is the light that is coming from the torch. That light coming from the torch is what we are referring to as the instant what? Ray. Then once it hits the surface, take an example of a mirror. It is reflected. And there we get the reflected ray. So here we have the incident ray and here we have the reflected ray. So that's why we are saying that light can be reflected. Light can be reflected. Why? Because here we are seeing the incident ray and we are seeing the reflected ray. Meaning that light can be reflected. Let's observe this diagram more carefully. We are seeing a dotted line in the middle here, running perpendicular. All together? Okay. So, this line here, we call it the normal ray. All together? This is the normal ray. It is a dotted line. And where the normal ray cuts between the incident ray and the reflected ray, this side we shall get an angle of incidence and this side we shall get an angle of reflection. We shall look at this diagram in detail in our next lesson to come. All together? But what I want us to understand for now is that light can be reflected. All together? Let's continue. Light can be dispersed. How? Light can be dispersed. 
Let's look at this diagram here. This diagram is showing us the dispersion of light in a glass prism. We are seeing how light has been split up. At first, we have a source of light right here. And this source of light is giving us, uh, it is sending off white light. But here we've got a glass prism. We've got a glass prism around here. Uh -huh. What happens when white light passes through a glass prism? So when light, when white light passes through a glass prism, it is separated into several colors that we refer to as the spectrum. And these colors are here. We have the violet color, the indigo, the blue, the green, the yellow, the orange, and the red color. You can always even see these colors uh, on the rainbow. Have you ever seen a rainbow? Yes, a rainbow has got these colors here. All together, these colors are seven. It has got the violet, the indigo, the blue, the green, the yellow, orange, and red. So, the splitting up of white light into several colors is what we are calling dispersion of light. All together, light can be split into several colors. Wonderful. Let's go to the next. Light can be refracted. Light can be refracted. Let's look at the word refracted properly. Yes. Light can be refracted, not reflected. Yes, this is refracted. What is refraction? Refraction is the bending of light rays. Refraction is the bending of light rays. All together. So, light can be refracted. How? When light rays hit some surfaces, it is bent. Refraction is the bending of light rays. So when you ask the question, what is the refraction? Refraction is the bending of light rays. So you can observe, you can see what happens here. This is a fisherman trying to, 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 to see where the fish is. But look, the real fish is here. How together? But because of refraction of light, how together? The image of the fish is seen to be this side. This is because of refraction. So if you are a person who is fishing and using this local method of using maybe a spear to, to fish, you will not get this fish. Because the fish will be this side, and for you, you will decide to pierce it the other side. So, because of refraction, the fish appears to be here, and yet it is this side. All together. I also want you to try out this one here. This one you can try it even at home, where you are right now. Just get a glass of water and place a pencil in that glass of water. What can you observe? You will observe that the pencil looks as if it is broken, as if it is not straight, as if there is one piece inside the glass and another piece almost coming out of the glass. This is due to refraction, the bending of light rays all together. So light can be refracted. That is one of the properties of light. Let's continue. Light can pass through some material. Yes, light can pass through some materials. Yes, there are some materials that can allow light to pass through them, like maybe the mirrors, the glasses, 
Yes, they allow light to pass through them. But there are other stubborn materials that don't allow light to pass through them. For example, the wall. The wall does not allow light to pass through it. Are we together? Light travels in a straight line from the source. That's true. Light travels in a straight line from the source. Then light travels in all directions from the source. Yes, light can also travel all directions from the source. But I want you to remember in a straight line. It can travel in all directions but still in a straight line. Let's continue. Let's look at the importance of light. How is light important to us? We already said that light enables us to see. I think that is one of the major, major, major importances of light. Yes, light is so important to us because it enables, it enables us to see. Are we together? But let's look at our first answer here. Light is used in photography. Very good. Light is used in photography. Have you ever had a camera or a phone and tried to take a photograph? Have you ever seen the flashlight coming out? Good. That means that photographers use light in order for them to take nice pictures. Are we together? Yes. So, even me who is now doing videography right now, I'm covering a video. Are you seeing me right here? Yes. In this video, there is light. If you can carefully look at my background here, there is light. And that is how you are able to see me. If there wasn't light here, then you would not be able to see me. If I was in a darker room, then you would not be able to see me. Let me try to put off my light here and you see how, what, 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 how it looks like when light is off. Let me just try to put off some little light around here and you see. Have you seen that? Uh huh. Have you observed that? So, when I put off the light, my video looks dark. Are we together? It does not look good. But when I put on the light, you are able now to see me properly. How together? So light is important. It is used in photography. You can also write and say it is used in videography. Light enables us to see and identify colors. Yes, you can only identify colors when using light. Light can enable you to see and identify colors. Light enables us to carry out photosynthesis. This is true. Because in your earlier classes, you defined photosynthesis and say, photosynthesis is the process by which green plants make their own food in the presence of sunlight energy. Meaning that these green plants can only make their own food in the presence of sunlight energy. And how does this sunlight help in the formation of this food? So, light helps to convert carbon dioxide and water to speed up the formation of starch. How together? So, for these plants to be able to make starch, because starch is their food, so when they say, Photosynthesis is the process by which green plants make their own food. Their own food is starch. The starch is what we are talking about. It is their own food. Plants can make their own food. Black and mole cannot make their own food. They depend on plants and animals. Plants can make their own food, but man cannot make his own food. Man depends on plants and animals. So for you can eat chicken, 
you can eat matoke. You can even eat rice. Yes, but plants cannot eat matoke. Plants cannot eat beef. Plants cannot eat pork. No. Plants eat starch. But light helps in the formation of starch. So, a question can also be asked. Why can plants make their own food at night? Yes, plants cannot make their own food at night because at night there is no sun, like simple. All together. Plants cannot make their own food at night because at night there is no sunlight. Because it is sunlight which helps in the formation of starch. All together. Let's continue. Light helps our skins to make vitamin D. Light helps our skins to make vitamin D. So our bodies have got, uh, they have got, uh, they have got, they have got uh, 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 a nutrient that they need, and that is vitamin D. Our bodies need vitamin D to be healthy. And if your if our bodies lack of vitamin D, especially if we are children, then we are likely to suffer from a deficiency disease known as rickets. Altogether, there is a deficiency disease known as rickets. Rickets is a deficiency disease that is caused due to lack of vitamin D in our body. So when you lack of vitamin D in your body, then there is a possibility of suffering from rickets. I want you to Google and find images of children who are suffering from rickets. Because children who are suffering from rickets will have bow shaped legs. Their, sh their legs will not be proper. They will be bow shaped. So why will these children's legs be bow shaped? It is because these children lack a very, very important ingredient in their body known as vitamin D. So it is the sun which helps our skin to make vitamin D. The sun does not make vitamin D, but the sun helps our skin to make vitamin D. Let's continue. Sources of light. Aha. Uh -huh. This is very simple. You have always seen light. Where does it come from? Does it come from the stones? No. Is the stone a source of light? No. Is the tree a source of light? No. Then tell me, what are the sources of light? Okay. Mm-hmm. Discuss between yourselves what are these sources of light. Okay, now the sources of light are broken down majorly into two major uh, major sources. We have the first, we have the natural sources of light, and secondly, we have the artificial sources of light. Let us begin with the natural sources of light. What are natural sources of light? These are sources of light provided by nature. These are sources of light provided by nature. Or you can say these are sources of light that were created by God. Are we together? Let's continue. Let's look at some of the examples. We have the sun. This is the main natural source of light. We have the stars. We have the fireflies. 
we have the we have lightning aha uh -huh. lightning l i g h t n i n g i want you to take note of that spelling lightning some scholars put a letter e in between of t and n in between t and n some scholars add their letter e which is wrong when we are talking about lighting, that is the spell. Lighting. Spell the word lighting. L I G H T N I N G. The word is lighting. You always see lightning when it is threatening to rain. When it is threatening to rain, you see a light in the sky. Then after some few seconds, you hear a big bang like a boom. <laughs> hmm. Now if Blake you are left alone in the house, what will happen? Hmm? You will jump up, run very fast and enter under mommy's bed and start screaming from there. Why? You're scared. What has scared you? Is it lightning? No. Is the thunder. The sound is called thunder. That sound that you hear bang like a big boom. Yes, that is called thunder. All together. But the light that you see before thunder is called lightning. So we are saying lightning is a is a natural source of light. Let's continue. Then we have the glow worm. These ones are also natural sources of light. They are living things. They are warm. But God created them in a special way that for them, they can emit light. They can give off light. All together? Okay. Then let's look at this note here. Uh, they are telling us that uh, the sun is the main natural source of light. Yes. The major. If we don't use the word main, then we can use the word major. The sun is the major natural source of light. Uh -huh. Then what about the moon? Let's see. We are saying that the moon is not a natural source of light because it reflects light from the sun. Altogether, the moon is not a natural source of what? Light. Because for it, it just reflects light from the what? From the sun. So, the sun can be also be called a luminous, uh, a luminous object because it, it it emits light on its own. Then the moon can also be called illuminated, an illuminated object. Why? Because for it, it just reflects light from the from the sun. How together? It does not emit light on its own. It just reflects light from the what? From the sun. Let's look at the artificial sources of light. Uh, these are people-made objects that emit light. People-made, money-made, you-made. Eh? For you, you man, you also made your own sources of light. God made his, and also man saw that uh, what God made for us is not enough. But since God gave man enough brain to think, man also thought about other ways of making light or creating light and therefore man came up with different uh, different objects that can help emit light how together okay what are they we have the lanterns those ones are man-made uh-huh then we also have the solar lamps those ones are also man-made we have the burning candles Yes, you can go and make a candle and then you light it up. 
that is man made god has never made a candle uh-huh then you have electric lamps yes electric lamps are also man made then we have the burning bush some of you are stubborn you get a fire uh, you can easily get a matchbox and you light up what uh, you light up a bush uh, you have made your own source of light maybe think about a man yes who lived in those years before even electricity was in existence how did he survive he was creative he put together firewood and then rubbed the sticks together to form fire and then he came up with what uh, a source of fire or a source of light are we together so a burning bush is also a natural source of light then electric bulbs electric bulbs are also natural uh no artificial you see we are talking about artificial electric bulbs are also artificial sources of light then fluorescent tubes are also uh artificial then lastly we have the torches yes the torches are also artificial sources of light so lady and gentleman that is some of the work we discussed with you during our first to first session uh, i've come up with an assignment and i want you to try out these numbers you can pause your screen and write down some of these numbers so when you come back i'll be marking this work how to get i want you to get your pen i want you to get your book write down these questions answer them neatly and sensibly and then when you come back for the first to first session i'll be marking them our questions are here and our first question says um what is light the answer is already provided well number two says write down any two artificial sources of light number three says identify three uses of light in our daily life then number four says how does light travel number five how are we able to see objects then number six says what is the reflection of light ladies lady and gentlemen blacky and more i wish you well we shall continue having more online sessions and uh, I wish you the best. Uh, take care of yourselves. I want also you to remember that COVID-19 is still surging around. Make sure you wear your mask. I don't think that I don't wear my mask because in this video you are not seeing me with my mask. Yes, uh, I'm alone. That's why I've not put on my mask. But in case you go out, and you meet people whom you don't always live with at home, please make sure your mask is on. Wash your hands with the soap and always pray. Put God in, your, in whatever you do and everything will work out perfectly for you. I wish you the best. I'm only looking forward to seeing you once again. Bye-bye.